Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of All Under Construction. I'm your host Martin Galligan and today we'll be exploring the kimono. <gasps> a traditional Japanese garment and the national dress of Japan, the kimono has a long and colourful history stretching all the way back to the Kofun era of 300 AD. You might have already seen it in Hollywood movies like Memoirs of a Geisha or The Last Samurai. But what really is the dress that's fascinated Japan and the world over? Well on today's episode we'll be joined by a special guest as we take a closer look. So sit back, relax and get ready for Discovering the Kimono. Born and bred in London, Liz has a sixth sense for danger. With a dazzling smile and a questionable sense of balance, she likes pina coladas and getting caught on a plane. We're here today at the world famous v &A Museum for the kimono exhibition, Kyoto to Catwalk. The exhibition features kimono all the way from the 1600s to the present day, and with over 315 works displayed, it's easy to understand why so many people are calling to the Victorian Albert Museum. Let's go take a look. <laughs> Founded and named after Queen Victoria and Prince Albert in 1852, the V&A is the largest museum in the world of arts and design, with a permanent collection of over 2 million objects. Nestled away on Cromwell Road, the V&A packs an impressive 145 galleries, 4 cafes, 4 shops and an outdoor garden. With free admission, it's hard not to come to one of the world's most stunning and scenic areas. However, today, we cast our eyes on one of the most iconic pieces of Japan's culture. Kimono, meaning thing to wear, originated in China and was introduced to Japan by Chinese envoys, where it became increasingly popular amongst the Japanese court society. During the beginning of the Edo period in 1603, Japan was a thriving economic powerhouse, which led to the arts, culture and fashion sectors growing and developing into the ukiyo or the floating world. Demands for the newest fashions and styles were a driving force behind the economy, with the kimono becoming the centerpiece of it all. The kosode or small sleeve was an ankle length kimono for men and women. Here they are decorated with lavish depictions of spring, bright colours and a variety of flowers with the accompanying artist drawings beside them. The yukata is a kimono worn in summer. Male kimonos were usually a lot more simpler both in style and tone with the yukata being a single layered kimono. Made from cotton and used for the warmer months, the yukata can still be seen today during Japan's summertime. Kimono were secured with an obi or sash and hair was manoeuvred into place by wooden combs and held by hairpins made out of tortoise shell. The exhibition is decorated with paintings and woodblocks or ukiyo-e. Woodblock prints of Edo celebrities were produced in the thousands as a way to circulate growing styles and inspiration. This particular woodblock is known as the party on a floating stage, or as I like to call it, living that weekend life, with men and women decorated in the latest kimono fashion, dancing around a group of musicians, which is basically every Saturday night. But the real eye catcher here in the Shrek theme colored rooms is this uchikake or outer kimono. Believed to be the kimono of an oira or Japanese courtesan, artists and courtesans were the fashion setters of their day. Oiran were the major celebrities of their time and were known as much for their wit, artistic abilities and culture as well as for their <clears throat> other gifts. When moving through their quarters, Oiran would wear the most colourful of kimono. The decorations on this one tell the story of the Shakyamono, a dramatic dance in which the lead actor would embody the spirit of the mythical Shishi or lion dog. As we entered the next part of the exhibition, we made our way through the red, pink and open rooms where further displays of kimono were draped against stylized backgrounds. As trade began to open up and more countries were becoming intrigued by what Japan had to offer, the kimono became a new fashion trend in the West, with royalty across the globe importing the garment. But the real eye catcher here is this.
Created in the 1600s, the Lord and Lady Clapham were miniatures of the contemporary styles in Japan, with much of the porcelain produced for export. The dolls also have nightgowns made out of Italian silk. They were exported in the thousands for the wealthy European class by the Dutch. So the lesson here is, you better be nice to the exhibition or these dolls could come calling. Being terrified enough, we left the Dolls of Death and made our way through to the last leg of the exhibition and entered the White Room. After World War II, Japan was left in ruins and with the country looking at how they could rebuild, they cast their eyes back to the past searching for an answer. In response to the national crisis, the government answered by making sure that historic practices were preserved. A system was created where the most important techniques and their practitioners were given the title Intangible Cultural Property and National Living Treasure. From this the kimono reigned in a new era where both Japan's past and future could coexist in harmony, with the kimono being seen as an object of both cultural and national identity. Still regarded as an iconic item and gracing the catwalks of the fashion world, the kimono has enriched every corner of the globe, from diplomatic gifts to the British royal family, one of the biggest franchises in the world, and celebrities like Freddie Mercury, Madonna and Bjork who've been mystified by the expressions of the East. And finally, to end the exhibition with Colleen Atwood's Oscar-winning kimono from the movie Memoirs of a Geisha. The story of a young girl Sayuri who sold to a geisha house in Kyoto, where she originally works as the house slave before training as a young Maiko. Always competing with her nemesis Hatsumomo to become the number one geisha in Japan, she finally achieves her dreams and is reunited with the man who she's always loved. It really is incredible to take in the magnificent experience that is the kimono, the thrilling array of colours, fabrics and shapes, the history that the kimono entails and the understanding of the millions of people who've adorned this symbolic garment. My guest was left astounded by this extraordinary encounter and felt it was necessary to leave us all with these 11 words of wisdom. So Liz, did you enjoy the exhibition? No, it was rubbish. It was Absolutely really, rubbish. Really, really amazing. If you could describe it in three words, what would they be? Colourful. Three words, there you have it. Okay Liz, it was amazing to have you. And, oh, what's that over there? Oh, okay, see you later, bye. <laughs> So there you have it, an intimate look at one of the world's most iconic pieces of clothing. The intricacies and details that go into making the kimono and the history of the garment that's endured it all. Don't forget to comment down below which one you like the most. And as always, thank you for watching folks. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like. Please consider subscribing, that would be amazing. And I'll see you in the next one. Go. <laughs> and the history of the garment that endured it all. Don't forget to go oh, mother.